Given an m by n binary matrix, I can find the distance from each cell to the nearest zero. The distance between two adjacent cells is 1. Cells to the left, right, above, and below the current cell is considered adjacent. Here are the constraints. This is noteworthy. There's at least one zero in math. And this is what it looks like. So we have this input, and we get this output because the distance to the nearest zero for this non-zero is 1 because you can go from here to a zero in a single step. Now in this case, we have this input, and you can see that all the ones stay the same, except this one, this one right here, because to get to the nearest zero, you have to halt twice, one here, one here, one here, one here, or one way here, here, and likewise from below. Now in this case, we have a similar, similar situation where we have this input, and for every other one, it's one hop to a zero. But this one, in particular, requires two hops at least, at least two hops. And basically, we want to have, the, when we're, whenever we're given this input, we want to produce this output. And that's all there is to this problem description. Next, we'll look at the solution. Now, solving this problem relies on the fact that, um, again, it's a dynamic programming problem. We're going to use overlapping subproblems. And what are the subproblems? The fact is, if you evaluate this array, this input array, from top to top left to bottom right, and only consider items uh, when you're evaluating from the top top left from this corner to this corner, you and you only you only evaluate things to the top and to the left of each cell, and then the second pass when you're evaluating from this corner to this corner for the same array, so you're going to go through the entire array twice you only ev evaluate things for the bottom and the right. And in that way, you've covered all four directions, right? So that's what's going on here. Um, zero is at this, so the minimum distance zero. Anywhere we see zero, zero just replaces itself. The only time we do checks is when we see something that's not zero, which is one. And then the minimum distance will be one plus the minimum of the cell above and to the left. So above and to the left, right? Which is, is, it, which is zero, right? One plus zero. And the same thing here happens. Same thing here happens. We're checking the top here. There's nothing to the left, so we set this value to infinity. And the minimum of zero and infinity is uh, zero. And then we add one to that. And we get one here as well. And in this case, and again, this is our first pass from this corner to this corner down here. And so in this case, the minimum of the top and to the left is one. And we add one to that and get two. That's basically the gist of this operation, the top pass. And what does that look like? It looks like this, right? So that's what this code does, this first pass. So we have our mat. We get the dimensions of the array, right? Uh, horizontal and vertical dimension. Uh, the rules are columns. And we loop through everything, as you can see here, standard nested for loop. And then we check, oh, if whatever we're at, we're evaluating, whatever we're evaluating has, is more than zero. Right? Check the element above. If there's no element above, set it to infinity, and we set it to infinity so that this minimum will pick up what's smaller, right? So check what's up. Um, okay, is it big? Is it above zero, right? So within the grid, that's what this checks, right? It's because if it's below zero, then it's uh, below the grid, which that doesn't exist. Same with J uh, that we're checking. So the thing that's up, we're gonna check. Okay, is uh, if, is, it, is it more than zero so that when we negate it here, when we subtract it, it doesn't become negative, Oop. right? That's why we're checking if i is bigger than zero, right? So i bigger than zero means i is not here, right? It's somewhere here, from here to uh, this way. And j bigger than zero means it's not here. It's from this row downwards. Or it might be the reverse, but either way, either one works. You can swap them out. And then... We set it to infinity so that uh, we can do the minimum and it will always pick what's less, which is basically what's inside the array. And whatever that is, we add one to it. That's the first pass. And now for the second pass, we go from the bottom and we're building on this, the solution we've just constructed from the, for the first pass. And then this time, we are checking the bottom and the right. Now, at first, we're checking as you can see here, the top and the left. Now we're checking the bottom and the right, and then we build on from there, okay? The bottom and the right. Then we update it to one in this case, right? Because 
because the right is zero, the bottom is infinity. So zero plus one changes this cell over here to one. Same, same, th same thing, this one stays the same, stays at zero, this one stays as one, and so on. And then we are done. And basically it's just this, but this time instead of checking up and left, we're checking down and right. And again, the same protections just so that we don't end up indexing something negative over here. And so that we set them to infinity when they do exist, when they are outside the boundary, so that we pick the smaller value, right? The value that actually exists. And when we're done, we just return that. And that's all there is to this problem. Now, time complexity, right? We go through everything, so it's m by n by n. Uh, the number of rows and number of columns. And then space complexity is one because no space other than the output is required for this algorithm. The same thing we got in is what we're modifying, so that, that's all there is to it. We don't change anything, we don't store anything extra. See you in the next video. Cheers.